Welcome friends. Welcome back to the AWS interview preparation course. Here we will see all the RDS questions. So the first question is, what is Amazon RDS? Amazon Relational Database Service, Amazon RDS, is a managed service that makes it easy to set up, operate, and scale a relational database in the cloud. It provides cost-efficient and resizable capacity. While managing time-consuming database administration tasks, freeing you to focus on your applications and business. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, when would I use Amazon RDS versus Amazon EC2 Relational Database Amis? Amazon Web Services provides a number of database alternatives for developers. Amazon RDS enables you to run a fully managed and fully featured relational database while offloading database administration. Using one of our many relational database AMIs on Amazon EC2 allows you to manage your own relational database in the cloud. There are important differences between these alternatives that may make one more appropriate for your use case. See cloud databases with AWS for guidance on which solution is best for you. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, are there hybrid or on-premises deployment options for Amazon RDS? Yes. You can run Amazon RDS on-premises using Amazon RDS on Outposts. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, how do I set up a connection between an application or a SQL-based client running on an Amazon EC2 compute instance and my Amazon RDS database instance cluster? You can set up a connection between an EC2 compute instance and a new Amazon RDS database using the Amazon RDS console. On the Create Database page, Select Connect an EC to Compute Resource option in the Connectivity section. When you select this option, Amazon RDS automates the manual networking setup tasks such as creating a VPC, security groups, subnets, and ingress-egress rules to establish a connection between your application and database. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, How do I set up a connection between serverless Lambda application and my Amazon RDS or Amazon Aurora database instance and or cluster? You can set up a connection between an AWS Lambda function and an Amazon RDS or Amazon Aurora database from the Amazon RDS console. On the RDS console, select an RDS or Aurora database from the database list page and choose Set up Lambda connection from the action menu. Amazon RDS automatically sets up your related network settings to enable a secure connection between the selected Lambda function and the RDS or Aurora database. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, What is a database instance, DB instance? You can think of a DB instance as a database environment in the cloud with the compute and storage resources you specify. You can create and delete DB instances. Define refine infrastructure attributes of your DB instances. And control access and security via the AWS Management Console. 
Amazon RDS APIs and AWS command line interface. You can run one or more DB instances and each DB instance can support one or more databases or database schemas. Depending on engine type. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, how do I create a DB instance? DB instances are simple to create using either the AWS Management Console, Amazon RDS APIs, or AWS Command Line Interface. To launch a DB instance using the AWS Management Console, click RDS and then the Launch DB Instance button on the Instances tab. From there, you can specify the parameters for your DB instance, including DB engine and version, license model, instance type, storage type and amount, and primary user credentials. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, how do I access my running DB instance? Once your DB instance is available, you can retrieve its endpoint via the DB instance description in the AWS Management Console. Describe instances API or describe DB instances command. Using this endpoint, you can construct the connection string required to connect directly with your DB instance using your favorite database tool or programming language. In order to allow network requests to your running DB instance, you will need to authorize access. For a detailed explanation of how to construct your connection string and get started, Let's see the next question. So the next question is, How many DB instances can I run with Amazon RDS? By default, customers are allowed to have up to a total of 40 Amazon RDS DB instances. Of those 40, up to 10 can be RDS for Oracle or RDS, for SQL Server DB instances under the license included model. All 40 can be used for Amazon Aurora. RDS for PostgreSQL. RDS for MySQL. RDS for MariaDB. And RDS for Oracle under the Bring Your Own License, Biol model. Note that RDS for SQL Server has a limit of up to 100 databases on a single DB instance. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, how many databases or schemas can I run within a DB instance? RDS for Amazon Aurora. No limit imposed by software. RDS for MySQL. No limit imposed by software. RDS for MariaDB. No limit imposed by software. RDS for Oracle. One database per instance. No limit on the number of schemas per database imposed by software. RDS for SQL Server. Up to 100 databases per instance. RDS for PostgreSQL. No limit imposed by software. RDS for DB2. Up to 8 databases per instance. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, How do I import data into an Amazon RDS DB instance? The following are a number of ways to import data into Amazon RDS. MySQL MISCLDUMP or MISCLIMPORT Utilities Oracle DATA PUMP IMPORT-EXPORT 
और एसक्यूएल लोडर एसक्यूएल सर्वर इंपोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट विजर्ट फुल बैकअप फाइल्स बक और बल्क कॉपी प्रोग्राम बीसीपी पोस्ट ग्रे एसक्यूएल पीजी अंडर स्कॉर्डम लेट्स सी द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज What are supported database engines in AWS RDS? Amazon RDS supports a wide range of popular database engines, offering flexibility and catering to diverse needs. Here's a breakdown. Open source. Amazon Aurora PostgreSQL compatible edition combines high performance of aurora with compatibility for postgresql applications amazon aurora mysql compatible edition similar to postgresql delivers high performance and mysql compatibility rds for postgresql standard postgresql engine ideal for web applications and data warehousing RDS for MySQL Standard MySQL engine widely used for web applications and general purpose databases RDS for MariaDB Open source alternative to MySQL with community support and some unique features Commercial RDS for SQL server full featured sql server edition for enterprise applications and legacy migration rds for oracle highly scalable and robust oracle database for mission critical applications rds for db2 ibm db2 engine for specific workloads requiring acid compliance and high availability additional options RDS for Snowflake managed service for deploying and running Snowflake data warehouse on AWS Amazon Redshift cloud data warehouse service for large scale analytics and data processing choosing the right engine depends on factors like your application requirements development skill set budget and existing infrastructure it's always recommended to research and compare the engines before making a decision let's see the next question so the next question is what are the storage options for aws rds aws rds offers several storage options to cater to diverse workloads and performance needs Choosing the right option depends on your budget, performance requirements, and access patterns. Here's a rundown: General Purpose SSD (GP to GP3). This is the default storage option, suitable for a broad range of workloads with mixed read-write access. Best for general purpose databases web applications e-commerce platforms content management systems provisioned iops ssd io1 high performance storage option ideal for intensive read write workloads and applications requiring consistent low latency best for database driven applications real time analytics financial trading platforms high traffic websites magnetic storage standard legacy storage option with the lowest cost per gigabyte offers slower performance compared to ssd options and might not be suitable for modern demanding workloads best for backups archival data infrequently accessed databases amazon aurora storage this is a dedicated storage system exclusively used for aurora database instances 
offers high performance, scalability, and automatic data distribution across multiple storage nodes. Best for high performance, mission critical database applications, large data sets, demanding workloads. Remember, Choosing the right storage option is crucial for optimizing your RDS performance and cost efficiency. Analyze your specific workload, access patterns, and budget to make the best decision. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, what are the benefits of RDS? AWS RDS offers a plethora of benefits compared to managing your own databases on-premises or with other cloud providers. Here are some key advantages to consider. Reduced operational overhead. Improved performance and scalability. Enhanced security and compliance. Automatic patching and backups. High availability options. Cost effectiveness. Disaster recovery options. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, what is the differences between single AZ versus multi AZ? Single AZ is cheaper but not fault tolerant. While multi AZ offers redundancy across multiple availability zones for high availability. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, what are the security features of AWS RDS? I am for access control, encryption at rest and in transit, vulnerability scanning, etc. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, Explain the backups and disaster recovery for AWS RDS. RDS offers robust backup and disaster recovery DR, mechanisms to ensure your data availability and business continuity in case of unexpected events. Here's a breakdown of these key features. Backups Automated backups By default RDS creates automated backups of your database instance at regular intervals, typically daily or hourly. These backups are stored in S3 in a highly durable and secure manner. Point in time recovery You can restore your database to any point in time within the retention period of your backups. This allows you to recover from accidental deletions. Corruption or application errors. Customizable retention. You can configure the retention period for your backups based on your needs. This helps you balance storage costs with the ability to recover from older events. Manual backups. Additionally, you can manually create backups of your database at any time. Providing an extra layer of protection. Disaster recovery. multi AZ deployments. By deploying your RDS instance in multiple availability zones, AZs, you gain automatic failover to a secondary instance in case of a primary AZ outage. This minimizes downtime and data loss. Cross-region replication. You can set up a synchronous replication of your database to another region. This provides a geographically dispersed backup in case of regional outages or even natural disasters. Amazon Aurora Global Databases For truly global applications Aurora offers global databases that span multiple regions and automatically synchronize data updates with minimal latency. Pilot Lite This managed service automates DR failover. 
simplifying the process of switching to a secondary region in case of a disaster. By leveraging these features and carefully considering your needs, you can build a comprehensive backup and DR strategy for your RDS database that minimizes downtime and protects your valuable data. Remember, Backups and DR are crucial for any online application. Don't hesitate to invest in these technologies and continuously optimize your DR plan for maximum effectiveness. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, What are the scaling options for AWS RDS? RDS offers two main approaches to scaling your database. Vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. Choosing the right method depends on your specific needs and application demands. Vertical scaling. Increase instance size. Simply choose a larger instance type with more CPU. Memory and storage for improved performance. This is a quick and easy way to handle moderate increases in load. Upgrade storage tier. Scale your storage capacity without affecting the compute resources by switching to a higher tier like provisioned IOPS SSD or general purpose SSD. This is helpful for applications with large data sets. Horizontal Scaling Read Replicas Add secondary read-only replicas to your primary instance to distribute read traffic and improve read performance. This is ideal for applications with high read-write ratios. Aurora Serverless MySQL and PostgreSQL Leverage the on-demand scaling capabilities of these Aurora editions. Your database automatically scales resources based on workload. Optimizing costs and eliminating manual scaling tasks. Additional options. CloudWatch Auto Scaling. Set up automated scaling based on defined metrics like CPU utilization or database connections. Your RDS instance can automatically scale up or down based on real-time demand. Aurora Global Database Achieve global scale and high availability with this service that spans multiple regions. Automatically replicating data with low latency. Choosing the right scaling approach requires careful analysis of your application's workload, performance requirements, and budget constraints. Don't hesitate to explore further and experiment with different options to find the optimal scaling solution for your RDS environment. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, what are the use cases for AWS RDS? AWS RDS boasts a wide range of use cases due to its versatility and powerful features. Here are some prominent applications. Web applications. Enterprise applications. Mobile applications. Analytics. E-commerce etc. Some other use cases are Content Management Systems, CMAs Big Data Processing DevOps and Testing Environments Let's see the next question. So the next question is Does Amazon RDS provide guidelines for support of new DB Engine versions? Over time, Amazon RDS adds support for new major and minor database engine versions. The number of new versions supported will vary based on the frequency 
and content of releases and patches from the engine's vendor or development organization and the outcome of a thorough vetting of these releases and patches by our database engineering team. However, as a general guidance, we aim to support new engine versions within five months of their general availability. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, how do I specify which supported DB engine version I would like my DB instance to run? You can specify any currently supported version, major and minor, when creating a new DB instance via the launch DB instance operation in the AWS Management Console or the Created Instance API. Please note that not every database engine version is available in every AWS region. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, What does the AWS free tier for Amazon RDS offer? The AWS free tier for Amazon RDS offer provides free use of single-azed MicroDB instances running MySQL. MariaDB, PostgreSQL, and SQL Server Express Edition. The free usage tier is capped at 750 instance hours per month. Customers also receive 20 GB of general purpose SSD, database storage and 20 GB of backup storage for free per month. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, you need to choose an RDS instance type for your e-commerce application with increasing user base and heavy product catalog. What factors would you consider? Expected data size. Concurrent user volume. Query complexity. And write read workload ratio would guide your choice. Start with a smaller instance and scale up based on actual usage. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, Your database performance suddenly drops when users place peak orders. How would you troubleshoot? Monitor CloudWatch metrics for CPU, Memory, and IOPS. Analyze slow queries. Optimize indexes. And consider scaling up or adding read replicas if needed. Let's see the next question. So the next question is. Explain how you would implement read replicas for your RDS instance to improve read performance. Set up a secondary RDS instance in the same region that automatically replicates data in real-time. This helps offload read traffic from the primary instance and enhance query response times. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, What are some best practices for securing your RDS database? Implement IAM for granular access control. Enable encryption at rest and in transit. Regularly patch systems. Monitor for suspicious activity. And consider VPC endpoints for private network access. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, you encounter a connection refused error when trying to connect to your RDS instance. How would you diagnose the issue? Check network connectivity. Verify RDS endpoint and security group configuration. Diagnose database service availability. And use CloudTrail for access logs to identify potential connection attempts. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, 
How would you monitor the performance of your RDS instance and identify potential bottlenecks? Monitoring tools CloudWatch Monitor key metrics like CPU utilization Memory usage IOPS Database connections And query execution time Database activity streams Get near real-time insights into database activity like DML operations and schema changes. RDS Performance Insights Analyze query performance and identify slow queries that need optimization. Identifying bottlenecks Analyze trends Look for spikes or sustained high levels in key metrics that might indicate a bottleneck. Correlate metrics Combine performance metrics with application logs and database activity streams to pinpoint the root cause of performance issues. Slow query analysis Identify slow queries using RDS performance insights or database query logs and optimize them for better performance. Let's see the next question. So the next question is how can you migrate an existing on-premises database to RDS seamlessly? AWS Database Migration Service, DMS DMS is a managed service that simplifies the migration of on-premises databases to RDS. It supports various database engines and offers features like schema conversion, data filtering, and continuous data replication. Steps Configure DMS Set up DMS with your on-premises database and the desired RDS instance configuration. Choose Migration Method Select the appropriate migration approach like full load, incremental load, or continuous replication. Monitor and validate Monitor the migration process and validate data integrity after completion. DMS provides a seamless and efficient way to migrate your existing databases to RDS. Minimizing downtime and ensuring data consistency. Let's see the next question. So the next question is, which of the following is not a storage option available for RDS instances? A. General Purpose SSD, GP2 B. Provisioned IOPS SSD, IO1 C. Magnetic Storage, Standard D. Amazon S3 E. Aurora Storage Answer D. Amazon S3 While S3 is a storage service offered by AWS, it's not directly used as storage for RDS instances. If you have any question or any doubt, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.